Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wacky Wednesday, a weekly series where we explore wacky deck ideas in both standard and modern, and this week we're taking a look at defenders in modern, and there's a lot of ways you can build a defender deck in modern. You can go on the beatdown plan with Doran or Assault Formation, but instead we're trying to generate a lot of mana with our defenders, since we have access to Overgrown Battlements, which taps for green mana for each defender we control, and we also have Axe Bane Guardian, which taps to add mana of any color for each defender we control. And in fact, Axe Bane Guardian can generate infinite mana in this deck if we combine it with Freed from the Real. This is an enchantment aura that we can put on our own Axe Bane Guardian, and then we can use the second ability from Freed from the Real, pay a blue mana to untap enchanted creature, and as long as we have a second defender in play, Axe Bane Guardian can generate two or more mana with each time we untap him, and that way we get to generate infinite mana, and with that infinite mana we can cast Giant Sphinx's Revelations, to draw our entire deck, and eventually we'll find a Blue Sun's Zenith, which we can target on our opponent, making them draw their entire deck and essentially milling them out. So that's the basic gist of the deck, so we're trying to play a bunch of defenders, assemble Axe Bane Guardian freed from the reel, and cast a lethal Blue Sun's Zenith. And one thing that our draw spells, or Axe Bane Guardian and our Freed from the Real all have in common is that they all have a converted mana cost of 3, which works out very nicely for our Drift of Phantasms, which is a 3 mana 05 defender with flying, but we're not actually planning on casting our Drift of Phantasms very often. Instead, it has Transmute, so we can discard it from our hand and then search our library for any card with converted mana cost of 3, and then put that card into our hand, so we can find any of the missing pieces between our Axe Bane Guardian, or or freed from the reel if we already have an Axe Bane Guardian or one of our draw spells. So our Drift of Phantasms rounds out the deck nicely, letting us find our missing combo pieces. So let's take a look at the entire list, starting out with our 1-drops, where we do have some additional mana acceleration in the form of 4 copies of Birds of Paradise and 2 copies of Noble Hierarch. Then moving up to the 2-drops, we have a bunch of defenders, we've got some more mana acceleration in the form of Sylvan Caryatid, making mana of any color, and also having Hexproof is pretty relevant. And we also have four copies of Wall of Omens, which is an 0-4 that draws us a card, so a nice cantripping defender. And then of course four copies of Overgrown Battlements, which can make a lot of extra mana, depending on how many defenders we have in play. Then the three drops we've already discussed for the most part, we've got four copies of Drift of Phantasms. Then one copy of Carven Caryatid, which is just a bigger version of Wall of Omens, a 2-5 that draws a card when it enters the battlefield. Then four copies of Freed from the Real, which in a pinch you could also use as a removal spell by enchanting the opponent's creature and then every turn paying one blue mana to keep it tapped down, but ideally you just use it as a combo piece with Axe Bane Guardian. You could also enchant your Overgrown Battlements, but the problem there is that while you do get to generate a lot of green mana, you don't have the infinite blue mana to keep untapping your Overgrown Battlements. So while Freed from the Real doesn't generate infinite mana with Overgrown Battlements, in some situations you might still want to enchant the Battlements just to make more mana for your Sphinx's Revelation or Blue Sun's Zenith. And then of course four copies of Axe Bane Guardian, which is kind of the centerpiece of the deck, and the deck wouldn't really work without him. And then our draw spells, we've got four copies of Sphinx's Revelation, which draws us X cards and gains us X life. And then two copies of Blue Sun's Zenith, which makes target player draw X cards, so we can also target our opponent with it. And once it resolves, we also get to shuffle it back into our library. And the advantage of running Blue Sun's Zenith as your win condition over something like a burn spell, like Banefire for example, is that when you don't have infinite mana, Blue Sun's Zenith can still be a useful card, since you can still just cast it for a big amount to draw a lot of extra cards, and then set up your infinite mana combo a turn or two later. Then taking a quick look at our mana base, we've got Botanical Sanctum, we've got some fetch lands, two flooded strands, for Misty Rainforest, which is the most important fetch land since our base colors are blue and green, and then two Windswept Heath as well to round out our fetch lands, then some shock lands, two breeding pools, one temple garden and one hallowed fountain, some basics, two islands and two forests, then one flooded grove, which can be useful in filtering green mana from overgrown battlements into blue mana for Freed from the Real, Drift of Phantasms or one of our draw spells. And finally, two copies of Horizon Canopy, which we can sacrifice to draw a card for when we have a lot of mana but not a lot of action. Then quickly going over the sideboard, we've got some of the usual suspects. One copy of a Rest in Peace against Graveyard decks, 
two copies of Stony Silence against Artifact decks, four copies of Leyline of Sanctity against decks with a lot of hand disruption, or against the decks that try to kill us with direct damage, then two copies of Worship, which we can also side in against decks that don't have a way to beat it, then some counter spells in two copies of Dispel and two copies of Negate, a Detention Sphere as kind of a catch-all answer that we can also search up with our Drift of Phantasms, and then finally one a Laboratory Maniac as an alternate win condition for when the opponent has something like a Leyline of Sanctity in play, then we can simply search up our Laboratory Maniac, which is also tutorable with our Drift of Phantasms, and then win the game that way just by drawing our entire deck. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand is a little awkward in that we don't have any white mana for two copies of Wall of Omens, but I think we still have to keep, just because we have our Axe Guardian plus Freed from the Real combo. So let's play a tap Breeding Pool, say go. Opponent with a tap Talaria West, so that could be perhaps an Amulet deck, this could be the Mono Blue Living End deck. We picked up Sylvan Caryatids, which is nice, so now we get to run that out and have access to three mana and also white mana for Wall of Omens. But we're probably gonna lead with Axe Guardian. Looks like our opponent missed their second land drop and discards Solemn Simulacrum, so perhaps they're on a Tron deck, who knows. Uh, we're just going to play on Horizon Canopy and run out Axe Guardian. Say go. And then set up to make infinite mana next turn, which we can use to play out our Wall of Omens. Or this Sphinx's Revelation, so if our opponent has no disruption, they're just dead here. So I think we just go for it here. And our opponent looks to be on blue Tron, so they could have access to Condescend, which isn't very useful here. They could also have a Remand. I think we just go for it here. Cast Freed from the Real. Alright, our opponent does have the Remand, which means that they get to live for another turn here. We could cast Wall of Omens, but I think we just run out another Axe Guardian, just to generate more mana next turn. Run out Axe Guardian, and say go. And then next turn, we'll try again with Freed from the Real. Let's try again. Alright, our opponent with Condescent X equals 2, so that we can definitely pay for. So Freed from the Real will resolve. Our opponent gets to Scry 2. So let's make some white mana first so that we can cast these Wall of Omens. So this way we need to click a little less when uh, making mana with our Axe Guardian. So we can just cast another Wall of Omens here since we can use Sylvan Caryatid to make blue mana to untap Axe Guardian. So let's make blue, untap, and now we can start generating a ton of mana. So cast a giant Sphinx's Revelation. And cast a giant Blue Sun Zenith on our opponent. Alright, on to sideboarding against Blue Tron, so this could get tricky. I think we want our counter spells, negate and dispel. I don't think we'll side in our Lab Maniac. Uh, Detention Sphere should be okay. Stony Silence could be okay, depending on their version. They could have something like an Oblivion Stone to blow up all our creatures. Carve and Carry Added is definitely cuttable. I think we keep in all the combo pieces here, and then we can shave some of our less important cards. Sylvan Carry Added, and then maybe shave a Drift of Phantasms and a Wall of Omens. Try something like this. Alright, this hand looks pretty good. We've got some birds to get things started. Wall of Omens can hopefully find us some more action, and we've got one of our combo pieces with Dispel as protection, so... Opponent with Expedition Map. So they'll be able to find a Tron land. Let's run out birds, and say go. Opponent just says go, keeps up two mana, which could be a Remand could be Condescent for one, so I don't think we want to run out our Axe Guardian into a Condescent for one. So instead I think we'll just be 
running out a uh, wall of omens here and then we can maybe also run out the birds which I don't mind if that gets condescended. Wall resolves, find another Axebane Guardian and I think I'll fetch for a breeding pool here just because we want as much green and blue mana as possible. Pay the two life and run out another birds which I don't mind if this gets condescended. Although it would be nice to have access to 4 mana next turn so that we can run out Axebane Guardian with the spell backup. Alright, the birds resolves. Opponent's gonna sacrifice Expedition Map end of turn. But they don't have any Tron lands in play yet, so they get an Urza's Mine. And they'll play that out. Opponent just passes. Botanical Sanctum is also a nice draw. So I think we just run out our Axebane Guardian here. resolves and I guess we can run out wall of omens our opponent could have something like a spatial contortion to kill the axe pain guardian but I think it's worth it to run out the wall here and then if they do have removal we still have a second axe pain guardian in hand so let's uh, tap out here wall of omens draws a card say go and hope our opponent doesn't do anything too scary on their turn I guess they could cast a Thought Not Seer, take away our Freed from the Real. There's Tron Land number two. And we also still need to find a way to win the game since we don't have any draw spell in hand. And we drew a Misty Rainforest for the turn. So yeah, we can make infinite mana here, but it's not really gonna do much for us. So I think we just run out Axe Bane Guardian number two. And then say go. Opponent with just an island, so they don't have the Tron mana yet. We're just gonna untap, find a wall of omens. I guess we fetch first. We could have fetched end of turn, I guess, to prevent drawing an extra land, since we kind of don't want to draw lands at this point. Get a hallowed fountain, run out wall of omens. Could also use the birds, of course, but wanna thin out the deck before drawing with wall of omens. Find a Windswept Heath, which will play out, and we'll fetch end of turn with. We're not gonna make a move yet. Opponent with Thirst for Knowledge, that resolves. So they'll get to draw some cards. Another Expedition map, so they will be able to complete Tron. They are potentially holding up multiple counter spells here. So let's get a Temple Garden tapped end of turn. Untap, find a negate. We definitely have lots of ways to protect our combo, but just need to find one of our Sphinx's Revelations, or Drift of Phantasms, or our Blue Sun's Zenith. Opponent sacks the map, gets third Tron land, so now they have access to lots of mana. We luckily did pick up negate, so we can counter some of the opponent's payoff cards here. Another expedition map resolves. Alright, another Axe Bane Guardian. I guess we can still run it out since we get owned by a Sweeper anyways. Resolves. So we have a lot of mana here, but nothing to do with it yet. Opponent just untaps. Another Urza's Tower. I think we still have more mana than our opponent with our triple Axe Bane Guardian. Just Sanctum. I guess we played out. Say go. So kind of a Staring contest here. Alright, there's a Sphinx's Revelation. Now we could just cast a Giant Revelation without needing to go for the Freed from the Real. But I kind of don't mind testing the waters with our Freed from the Real. And seeing if our opponent has a response to us making infinite mana. So let's target Axe Bane Guardian. And see how this goes. Opponent with a repeal, X equals 3 on our Axe Bane Guardian. They have one more blue mana available, so they can't have a ton of interaction left. So I think we do the spell here. And our opponent just has Condescent for 12, which we can just pay for. Opponent 
Sir Appeal gets countered, we get to make infinite mana. Cast a giant Sphinx's Revelation, find Blue Sun Zenith. Alright, sweet, managed to beat Blue Tron, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty interesting hand, and I think we'll keep. We have double birds for some mana acceleration, and then our uh, Drifts of Phantasms are a little slow here, but they do find our combo pieces. Opponent with Watery Grave, so this could be a Grixis Death Shadow deck. And there's a Thought Seize, which is going to find a pretty interesting hand. Opponent takes one of our Phantasms, which means that they might have the birds covered, or they're just going to take all our payoff cards and leave us with a bunch of birds. So let's just get a Breeding Pool here. Run out of birds. Say go. And our opponent didn't have a second land, it looks like. Interesting, so we could transmute the Drift of Phantasms here and go get an Axebane Guardian, but the problem is that we don't have the second piece of the combo and we don't know what we have to look for, so I think we're better off just running out birds and saying go. Bonon did find a second land. Blood Crypt untapped. Is this a Death Shadow? No, a Thought Scour, interesting. So they wanted to thin out their deck first. Death Shadow goes to the graveyard as well as a Stubborn Denial. And alright, now they play out a Death Shadow, which resolves. And of turn we'll fetch for, I guess, a blue-white source. So Hallowed Fountain. Untap. We could also just run out the Drift of Phantasms as a blocker, but I don't expect Death Shadow to stay a 1-1 for long. So I guess we could just Blue Sun's Zenith for 2 end of turn. Or just right now to play around Stubborn Denial. Yeah, I think we just Blue Sun's end of turn. Opponent's gonna cycle a Street Wraith. Death Shadow already a 3-3. And our opponent's just gonna pass, interesting. But end of turn I think we do need to Blue Sun's just to get something going. Looks like our opponent has a response, could be a Colagon's command, and in fact they're gonna kill a bird, return Street Wraith. That works. Alright, there's Freed from the Reel, so that's one combo piece. So we could just transmute for Axebane Guardian, but that's gonna take two turns to set up, so that's a little slow. And we might just die to this Death Shadow in the meantime. But I guess we don't have anything better to do here. So let's run out a fetch land. Transmute our Phantasms for... We could also just get another Sphinx's Revelation to gain some life, but I think we need to go for the combo here. So let's get an Axebane Guardian. I guess we could also just use our Freed from the Reel on the Death Shadow as a removal spell if uh, they manage to answer our Axebane Guardian. So those are all options. But for now we're just gonna say go. Of course, a lot of things mess up our plan. Any removal spell on the Axebane Guardian, any hand disruption spell in the following two turns. Stubborn Denial on the Freed from the Real or Blue Sun Zenith. And in fact, our opponent's got a Snapcaster, perhaps for Thoughtseize, to take a look at our hand. So if they take away Axebane Guardian, we're probably just going to use the Freed from the Real on Death Shadow as a removal spell. So there's a Thoughtseize. Opponent takes the Freed from the Reel, so they might have a removal spell for Axebane Guardian or don't want us to use the Freed as a removal spell for the Death Shadow. Cycle Street Wraith, so Death Shadow 7-7, seven, seven, which is pretty scary, but I think we still have to take it here. So down to 9 we go, and end of turn will fetch, I guess, a Temple Garden. Untap, find overgrown battlements, so we can just make a bunch of blockers here, which is probably our best bet since a blue sun zenith here isn't very effective. If by some chance our opponent has absolutely nothing to interact here, and we top deck another Freed from the Reel or a Phantasms, then we could just win next turn, but that's not very likely. Serum Visions. And we might just have to chump with the birds here. 
otherwise Death Shadow could be lethal. But we'll see if our opponent loses life main phase or not. This is a pretty tricky matchup since we don't get to punish our opponent for losing all that life, since uh, we're not gonna attack them. Looks like our opponent is casting a Dismember on the Axebane Guardian. Now we have to chump with the birds, and a Fatal Push on the Battlements as well. So yeah, that leaves us with very few resources. So Snapcaster is gonna get in for two, and I don't really see how we get back into this. And another Serum Visions. I guess we need Wall of Omens into Noble Hierarchs with maybe some birds to fly over with Exalted, but that's kind of a stretch. Find a forest instead. So we do need to find a Chum Blocker just to stay alive, which means we can Blue Suns for 2 or for 1. I guess we Blue Suns for 1 in case we find a Wall of Omens and get some traction going. There's a Wall of Omens. So now we have a blocker for the Death Shadow, and we get to draw a card. And there's the Sphinx's Rev. Alright, alright, so... At least stringing together some draws. We are just dead to a removal spell, and there it is. Alright, so Death Shadow unsurprisingly managed to beat us here. Things do get a little bit better after sideboard, as we pick up Rest in Peace and Ley Line of Sanctity, and we can also board in our Worships which your opponent's gonna have a hard time beating. On to game two we go. So we want Ley Lines, we want Worships, we want our one copy of Rest in Peace, and I don't mind Detention Sphere as an answer to Death Shadow. Could also consider our counter spells. Probably wanna take out all the small stuff since our opponent could be boarding in additional sweeper effects for those. And they're not great in an attrition matchup. I think we do bring in all the counter spells and then we can just shave on some parts of the combo. Take out two Freed from the Reel, shave a Sphinx's Revelation, and perhaps a Drift of Phantasms. So we're kind of all over the place, but the essence is that we shave down on a few of the combo pieces, take out all the one man accelerants and bring in some disruption. We would like to be on the play. And this hand unfortunately is not great with only one land. So I think we have to mulligan. This is better. And Botanical Sanctum I think we can keep on top. And then we can just lead with a tapped breeding pool. Since we're probably not going to dispel on turn 1. And don't want to fetch away our Botanical Sanctum, which I do think we want. As an additional mana source. If uh, our mana ramp creatures die, we still have a blue suns we need to cast. Looks like a turn one hand disruption spell. Nope, just a serum visions. All right, let's run out the battlements. Thought scour into perhaps a delf creature. Nope, just a fatal push on the battlements. And now we have an interesting decision. Do we play out the Axebane Guardian or do we wait until we can also keep up the spell? The problem with waiting is that we get owned by Hand Disruption spell. And I guess your opponent does need a way to enable Revolt on Fatal Push or they need something like a Dismember or Terminate, which they might not have. I think we probably still want to run out the Guardian, otherwise we're not doing much. So let's fetch a Hallowed Fountain and run out Axebane Guardian. And say go. Opponents fetching, so they do have Revolt enabled if they have another push or Snapcaster into push. Alright, there's a Gurmag Angler. Opponent still got two mana up. And looks like a Dismember on the Axbin Guardian, so our decision to run out Axbin on three might have come back to bite us here, as waiting could have maybe let us keep up the spell. Opponent also with a Death Shadow, so. Dex running on all cylinders over there. So far our opponent hasn't cast any hand disruption spells, so even if we started on a ley line of sanctity, that wouldn't really have helped us much. So we get to run out of fetch lands, say go. And then we're in trouble. Opponent can hit us for 10, and next turn hit us for 10 once again, and we're dead. The tension sphere doesn't really help us here, so I don't think we have an out. 
Liliana of the Veil resolves. And we're forced to discard. I think we just discard the Blue Suns. Opponent discards Fatal Push. Alright, there's a Wall of Omens, which is decent here. Find an Axe Bane, so we could run out the Axe Bane. Opponent minuses, we have to sag the Wall of Omens, but then we're at 5, so both creatures are lethal. So running out Axe Bane actually doesn't do us any favors. So yeah, I think we're just dead here. We have to sacrifice a wall. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand looks pretty good, so we'll keep. We've got a turn one birds, turn two overgrown battlements, and then some card draw spells. Opponent with Blooming Marsh, so it could be a mid range deck. As we see a Thought Seize, and they're probably gonna take the overgrown battlements unless they have a removal spell for it. Maybe if they have two hand disruption spells, they can just take the two card draw spells instead. And instead they take the Karyatids, meaning that they probably have a removal spell for the Battlements. Alright, freed from the reel, so let's run out Battlements, say go. And hopefully the Battlements survives, otherwise we don't have a lot of mana ramp to go with these card draw spells here. Another Thought Seize. That's going to take the Freed from the Reel. Let's fetch end of turn, get a Hallowed Fountain. Forest for a turn, so let's say go. And we could Blue Suns or Wrath for two here, and we probably do that end of turn here. Another Thought Seize, let's let that resolve. And then we can draw our cards end of turn. We could respond with the Revelation. That way we gain two more life, but this way our opponent won't get to take whatever we draw into and has less information. So let's draw two. I guess now that our opponent took one of our card draw spells, there's an argument for uh, just keeping our card draw spell in hand. But on the other hand, we do kind of want to get things going here. Find a Battlements, which lets us cast Axe Bane Guardian. So now we have lots of mana in play, all we need is another card draw spell to go with the Freed from the Reel to win the game if our opponent can't kill the Axe Bane Guardian. Our opponent with the triple Thought Seas start, but we still managed to get something going here. There's Abrupt Decay on Axe Bane Guardian, so no infinite mana for us. And Drift of Phantasms means we can transmute for one of our card draw spells, I think. Let's just get a Sphinx's Revelation and say go. And there's no way for us to transmute and still cast our card draw spell here since we only have the three blue mana sources. So hopefully they don't have another Thought Seize effect. Instead a Dark Confident, which is a problem since we don't have a real removal spell for that since Freed from the Real doesn't really deal with it. So it's actually interesting since if we play the Battlements we have to tap a Battlements that's already in play which is going to cost us one mana essentially to play this extra battlements which is an extra card we could be drawing but it's probably worth it to still run it out here so let's tap this for green mana run out battlements and i guess we could say go and then try and draw even more cards next turn yeah i think we're better off waiting a turn with this revelation Unless our opponent forces our hand with an Inquisition, in which case I think we need to go for it, so let's rev and draw four. Alright, our opponent's gonna take the Sphinx's Revelation, leaving us with two freed from the reel and an Axe Bane Guardian. So yeah, our opponent takes a Revelation, and now we just have to hope to top deck something spicy. Another Axe Bane Guardian. That's pretty spicy. Let's run out to Axe Bane Guardians. We 
We could use a Freed from the Real on Scavenging Ooze, but I kind of like saying go because this way, if we do find the card draw spells, we can win through a removal spell on an Axe Bane Guardian since we can just go for the other Freed from the Real as well. Opponent reveals Tarmogoy from Dark Confidence, so they're already down to 10 from all these Thought Seizes and Dark Confident triggers. Maelstrom pulls, oh no, on Overgrown Battlement, that's unfortunate. Opponent is tapped out though, so if we do find a card draw spell, we do win the game. So let's fetch end of turn, get another Temple Garden, I think. Although we could have gotten another Breeding Pool as well. Wall of Omens is a good one. And Botanical Sanctum the draw. Let's play that out, say go. And now we have to hope that their confident kills the opponent or that we top deck into one of our outs here. Drift of Phantasms would do it, Blue Sun Zenith would do it, and Sphinx's Rav would do it. But we don't have a ton of card draw spells left in the deck. Liliana of the Veil vale is gonna pressure our hand, so now we don't have the win if our opponent has a removal spell. Opponent discards Lingering Souls. They're gonna fetch right now for a forest so that they can eat with Scavenging Ooze, so I guess that's a way for them not to lose to their own Dark Confident as well, if they can keep discarding creatures. They're gonna eat Sylvan Caryatids. But still, a top decked Drift or card draw spell wins us the game. Just a Misty Rainforest, which we have to keep in hand to discard to Liliana here. So we only have a few more turns, and every turn our opponent gets to draw additional cards with their confidence, which increases their chances of disrupting the combo. So things aren't looking great. We had a small window to win the game. There's Tarmogoyf that we knew about. Liliana takes up. Discard the Rainforests. And as long as our opponent keeps up a removal spell, they should be safe. And they're eating with the Scavenging Ooze once again. So our opponent either doesn't have a removal spell in hand, or they don't know that we're able to win the game with our free from the reel. So our opponent's gonna hit us for four. Horizon Canopy, that's a redraw. So let's go for it. Well, there's Blue Sun Zenith, so I think we've done it. Freed on Axebane Guardian, and opponent did not have a Slaughter Pact, so I think we're good to go here. And we have the Blue Sun, so we just need to do it for a lethal amount to mill out the opponent. Alright, and there we go, Blue Sun Zenith for 40. Opponent's got 39 cards left in library, so this should be lethal. And there we go, awesome. On to sideboarding against Abzan. I think we want the Detention Spheres, I think we want the Ley Lines. Opponent does have Maelstrom Pulses, so Worship is not a guaranteed win. Opponent might also bring in Collective Brutality. I think one Rest in Peace could be okay. What do we take out? I don't mind shaving some of our Mana Dorks against potential Sweeper effects. And then we can shave a Drift of Phantasms and a Freed from the Real and try this. Alright, we get to start with a Leyline of Sanctity in play. So let's keep and put a Leyline in play. So any hand disruption from the opponent is now blanked. Liliana can only force us to discard but can't ultimate or force us to sacrifice a creature. We still need to find some mana acceleration to go with our card draw spells. But uh, hopefully Wall of Omens can find us some goodies. So what we don't want to see is an early Tarmogoyf with lots of card types going to the graveyard, since that's a way for them to potentially attack past our walls. Maelstrom pulls on Leyline of Sanctity would also be pretty bad. Opponent going for the Dark Confidence. Alright, so that's a problematic card. Sylvan Caryatid. I think we still want to Wall of Omens first here, in case we find an Axe Bane Guardian. Botanical Sanctum instead. Let's see what Dark Confident finds. Blooming Marsh, so that's a nice pain-free draw. I guess I would rather have seen a Tarmogoyf than a Dark Confident on two. 
but uh, not all Absan decks run a ton of Dark Confidence. Opponent could still have ways to finish off the Wall of Omens, but I'm not too concerned. And it looks like, yep, I collect the Brutality to finish off the Wall of Omens, that's fine. Alright, there's a Drift of Phantasm, so we could use that to tutor up a Detention Sphere to get rid of the Dark Confident. Or we could just get an Axe Bane Guardian. Or we can just run out the Sylvan Carry Edit for now. I think I'm okay with Transmuting here. I guess the problem with Detention Sphere is that our opponent could have Abrupt Decay just to deal with it. But same goes for Axe Bane Guardian. I think we need to go for Detention Sphere here. Otherwise the card advantage from Dark Confident is just gonna add up. So let's pass a turn. Another Dark Confident revealed. So I guess they're not playing out the second copy here. But that does make our Detention Sphere a bit worse. So down to 18 we go. Opponent just says go. There's a Sphinx's Rav. There's no real reason to Detention Sphere the Confident here, so let's just run out Karyatid and say go. Opponent just gets another Overgrown Tomb, so they're not interested in getting white sources, it looks like. Collective Brutality revealed, at least that one doesn't do much. And there's a Tarmogoyf. Untap, find another Drift of Phantasms. Alright, so we could use that to get an Axe Bane Guardian, which is probably gonna eat a removal spell. I think we're better off just casting a Revelation here, so let's pause a turn. Shambling Vent revealed. Take three. And then fetch a forest and cast a revelation. Alright, so we're finding some uh, mana dorks, which is good. So let's run out Axe Bane Guardian and Karyatids. And say go. Abrupt Decay on Axe Bane Guardian, as predicted. Dark Confident reveals Treetop Village. So we still know about a Dark Confident in the opponent's hand. Let's block. Down to 13. End of turn fetch. Get a Hallowed Fountain. Alright, I think we're gonna just Sphinx's Revelation end of turn once again. No need to really transmute for anything, so let's just say go. Swamp revealed, so Dark Confident hitting mostly lands, which is good for the opponent. Treat of Village gets animated. So we are going to take a pretty big hit here. And the Scavenging Ooze joins the fun, eats up the Axe Bane Guardian, and eats up the wall, and eats up the Sphinx's Revelation as well, so our opponent is stepped out. Alright, end of turn, last revelation. Alright, find some battlements and an Axe Bane Guardian. Alright, so I think this turn we just unload a bunch of creatures. So let's fetch some basics. Run out Axe Bane Guardian. Run out battlements. Run out battlements. We could either Detention Sphere or Drift of Phantasms here. I think we Detention Sphere the Scavenging Ooze. Which at the very least also resets all the plus one plus one counters. And say go. Inquisition of Kozilek doesn't do much at the moment. There's a Liliana which can force us to discard. I think we discard Flooded Strand at this point. Shambling Vent gets animated which is pretty interesting that they didn't go for the treetop village. I did not mean to skip through our blockers there, since I definitely wanted to block the Shambling Vent and the Dark Confident with our uh, two overgrown battlements, but apparently I skipped through blockers. So we're at one, so definitely don't want to tap this Horizon Canopy, but we can just Sphinx's Wrath, opponent keeping up two mana, which does represent Abrupt Decay, and we don't have two Axe Bane Guardians, so we can't really go for the uh, combo kill here. But we can Revelation for a bunch, 
So I think we just run out the canopy anyways. Confident reveals lingering souls. Liliana the last hope. Yep, that works. Opponent casts lingering souls and flashes back, so they must have Fatal Push at the ready, but Fatal Push does not kill our Axe Bane Guardian. So they make us discard. I guess we could have Revelationed in response. I guess we can discard the Blue Sun Zenith for now, since we still have another one in the deck. So if your opponent doesn't have Fetch Land, they should just be dead next turn. They're gonna plus on the Axe Bane Guardian, that's fine. And they're shocking, so they must have Abrupt Decay at the ready. Nope, never mind. Collective Brutality just to finish off the Axe Bane Guardian. That also works. So let's tap this for mana in response. So let's cast a Giant Revelation. Opponent can attack us for 6, they did not. Alright. So now we can just play out a bunch of Axe Bane Guardians. Let's play out an Axe Bane Guardian. Play out a Rest in Peace. Play out a second Axe Bane Guardian. Can run out some more walls here. Want to be mindful of damnation. Alright, this should be enough. So let's go to discard. And then discard everything we don't need, which is lands. Alright, so let's see if our opponent has more than one removal spell for Axe Bane Guardian. But I guess at this point we could just use our battlements to uh, finish off our opponent. So they get to kill a noble. So we still have a Blue Sun Zenith in our deck, which we can transmute for, and with all these battlements and Axe Bane Guardians we just have enough mana to finish off our opponent, I think. Even without the infinite combo. Fatal push on a battlement. So it looks like the opponent drew a Tarmogoyf from this Dark Confident. Liliana makes us discard a card. Let's discard a Wall of Omens. Opponent can attack us with a bunch of flyers. And they're passing, so they're keeping up a bunch of removal spells. So let's see how much mana can we make here. If we run out another battlement, that nets us a bunch of mana, so let's do that first. So let's just count up our mana here real quick. 9, 18... Yeah, this should be enough. 36, so yeah, we should just be able to transmute. For a Blue Sun Zenith. And then cast the giant Blue Suns on our opponent. Alright, X equals 41. So you get to draw all the cards you want, and that does it! Sweet! Managed to beat Abs on midrange with a little bit of help from our Ley Line of Sanctity. So I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series, so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go. Thank you.